San Diego resident Melissa Smith told the local news that she'd seen the same pregnant woman with a small boy of about five in tow, panhandling at a local mall every weekend for a couple months. But one weekend, she got an unexpected shock when she spotted the down-on-her-luck mom, who would sometimes be joined by a man who is presumably the boy's father, climbing into a Mercedes-Benz luxury car and driving away. As luck would have it, Miss Smith happened to stop at the same gas station as the crooks on the way home. The man was with them, and as they left the gas station, Miss Smith followed. All the so just imagine a homeless person using a Mercedes Benz and you are using one uh, kukere kukere fakere car. When I mean kukere fakere, I mean you're just using one one small car. You, you're still dreaming of buying a Mercedes Benz while the homeless person you're giving money is using a Mercedes. Think about it. What's going on guys? You already know it's your boy M to the A to the C to the K-A-Y vibes and I'm back again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about 10 fake homeless people caught on camera okay okay let me calm down <laughs> 10 fake homeless people caught on camera and exposed you feel me i'm sure some of y'all have given money to homeless people right but you thinking you're giving it to homeless people but do you know that some of these homeless people are actually fake like i just said some of them have nice houses i'm talking about big houses nice cars that you dream to buy you're dreaming of buying those cars but they already have them you're taking advantage of people Anyways, we're about to expose these people. We're about to watch this video, react to it. Let me know what you think about it. And let me know your experiences giving homeless people money. Don't get me wrong, it's good to give, but you have to be careful. So this is my advice, right? If you really want to give to the homeless, I'll suggest you go to the organization. Talk about the organization that takes care of homeless people and you can give them your donation. I think it's better that way because some of these people that you think are homeless are not actually homeless and they're making the homeless people look bad. Before we go any further, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You feel me? Turn on post notifications and join the Market Vibes family today. You want to join the vibe, you feel me? So now, let's get to the video. When we think about the homeless, it's safe to say that most normal people ponder the enormity of the problem and what we can do as a society to help. It simply doesn't cross most of our minds to wonder if we could somehow exploit the plight of the homeless for our own financial gain. But it turns out that there are some heartless con men and women out there who use their cunning and complete lack of scruples to do just that. Fortunately, in a world where practically everyone has a video camera in their pocket, many of these crooks get exposed for all the world to see. Here's a karmically satisfying list of the top 10 fake homeless people busted on camera. San Diego resident Melissa Smith told the local news that she'd seen the same pregnant woman with a small boy of about five in tow, panhandling at a local mall every weekend for a couple months. But one weekend, she got an unexpected shock when she spotted the down-on-her-luck mom, who would sometimes be joined by a man who is presumably the boy's father, climbing into a Mercedes-Benz luxury car and driving away. As luck would have it, Miss Smith happened to stop at the same gas station as the crooks on the way home. The man was with them, and as they left the gas station, Miss Smith followed. All the so just imagine a homeless person using a Mercedes Benz and you are using one uh, kukere kukere fakere car. When I mean kukere fakere, I mean you're just using one, one small car. You, you're still dreaming of buying a Mercedes Benz while the homeless person you're giving money is using a Mercedes. Think about it. So that's why it's really hard for some people to give homeless people money these days because you don't know the real from the fake. It's difficult to know. The fake ones are out there, trust me. Mercedes Benz? Let me go. <laughs> God of this. You see the house like this, eh? You like you just walk out land by like, ah ah kilo day. You just open your mouth like this. Like, ah, ah. Is this a homeless person? And all they just do is just sit there, just collect money. I mean it doesn't look easy, but hey. Oh god. Can you just imagine that? while snapping pictures of the couple, their car, and their license plate. The local news station traced the plate to an apartment in the area, but as may have been expected, nobody answered the door, and a few days later, the couple appeared to have split. But not long after the story broke, the couple were spotted again, this time with their newborn, asking for handouts in a different part of town. When confronted by reporters, they feigned being bad at English and denied having a Mercedes before hurrying away in a black minivan. Apparently, their scam worked well enough to rent an apartment and buy not one, but two vehicles. But now that their cover had been blown, it's unlikely they'll be able to milk San Diego residents for any more of their hard-earned cash. 
Michael Le Dominguez of Richmond, Virginia was running a similar con, and she may have been able to keep pulling it off for a little longer, or at least avoid a jail, if she weren't as foolish as she is crafty. Alert residents who had noticed her panhandling throughout the city confronted her in a video that quickly went viral, as she was getting ready to take off in her shiny new Fiat, which she had left in a McDonald's parking lot during her begging excursion. You see what I'll be saying about these people sometimes? See the type of cars they're using. See the type of expensive cars that they're using. But I don't understand how people are comfortable. I'm talking about fake people like this. Are comfortable just sitting out there asking people for money. Like how do they... I don't understand how that works. And then you know you're going back to your expensive mansion. But how, does, how do they gather all that money together to be able to afford these expensive houses, this expensive lifestyle? Like this are some expensive stuff, bro. I'm really trying to understand this. I'm guessing they go to some special locations where they know rich people stay. You feel me? And you know how rich people can always be now. Just give them $100, $200. You feel me? Man, driving a Fiat, driving a Mercedes Benz. <sighs> oh, God. She insisted that the whistleblowers leave her alone, dodging questions about her activities and her car before finally and lamely asserting that she has a disability, the nature of which she of course refused to disclose. After her sudden YouTube stardom, she inexplicably chose to go right back to the same routine, and the public was quick to call her out. In the middle of being caught on video yet again scamming the public, she began lobbing Gatorade bottles at a car, which was enough to earn her a well-deserved trip to jail. Miss Dominguez will want to think twice before trying to run her con in Richmond again, but somehow it's seems likely we haven't seen the last of her. Gary Thompson was a regular on the streets of Lexington, Kentucky, and if you'd seen him, you probably would have reached for your wallet. The wheelchair-bound Thompson spoke with the childlike halting cadence of the profoundly mentally disabled, and told the story about how a settlement that his mother had received for the motorcycle accident which had disabled them as a child, to the tune of $2.5 million, had long since dried up. That part was true, and Gary indeed needs the wheelchair, but as a degree holder in speech and language pathology, the mental disability was just a manipulative, masterful piece of acting. Gary was busted by a local news crew speaking in his regular voice, but instead of being contrite or evasive, he boastfully admitted his scam and claimed to earn close to $100,000 per year perpetrating it. Predictably, $100,000 per year just by acting like a fake homeless person. A hundred thousand, hello, me go. Someone that's working really hard every single day is not making up to half of that. I'm telling you, some people that work hard every single day, they don't make up to half of that $100,000, bro. Hey, Ibai, Ogbolobo. This one now, Ogbolobo. Ah, I fear some people, $100,000 a year. the story went viral, and the intense public backlash was enough for Gary to change his tune. In a follow-up story a few weeks later, he claimed to have quit panhandling and begun seeking employment, and to be genuinely remorseful. But while feigning a mental disability may not have been enough for the police to get involved, the bad checks he had been passing along with the nearly $100,000 in fraudulent Social Security and Medicaid benefits he had obtained was. Gary is currently in the slammer, and he may be there for a while. In 2012, a New York City TV news crew got a little curious about a woman they would see every day making her way up and down Fifth Avenue, which is populated by trendy upscale shops and the well-to-do shoppers who frequent them. Dressed in rags with her back bent at a terrible angle, she would hobble along on her crutches, shaking her cup and asking for donations, and she would get a lot of them. The news crew watched her day after day, scoring up to 50 donations per hour, and then hopping on a crosstown bus, getting into a black van, and emerging as a completely different woman. As you can see, she is neither dressed in rags nor having any difficulty with walking. And once they compiled this smoking gun evidence, the woman was confronted while in costume by a reporter and cameraman. Refusing to break character, the woman hobbled away while the reporter implored her to give up the act, to no avail. The woman hasn't been identified, and chances are she's moved on to a less public scam in the years since. But if you're ever doing any shopping in the Big Apple, you might want to keep an eye out for this shameless phony. 
Wow. In 2016, a beggar in the city of Altay in northwest China tried an unbelievably ridiculous method of feigning disability in order to gain sympathy. Video which went viral throughout China showed a suspicious passerby interrogating the man, who appeared to have lost his legs below the knee. But the passerby forcibly removed the man's pants, exposing his impressively contorted legs, which he had somehow <laughs> folded into his underwear. You may recognize this as the exact way wow. attempted by Eddie Murphy's character Billy Ray Valentine in the classic comedy film Trading Places, which makes the gambit all the more hilariously stupid. He probably won't be trying this again anytime soon, what with the public humiliation. But one could argue that any money he bilked out of the public was worth it for this sublime piece of comedy. Iowa business owner Mike Man, Pothoff decided to take matters into his own hands it, when he kept seeing the same two teenage boys holding a sign reading, Broken Hungry, Please Help, on a street corner by his place of business for several days. He approached them and offered them a job in his store, but instead of being grateful for the offer of gainful employment, they turned him down, telling him that they weren't from the area. Mr. Pothoff was puzzled, but his puzzlement turned to anger when he saw the same boys holding the same sign a couple days later. He repeated his offer but was turned down once again, so he made a sign of his own. One which read, offered these guys a job, they said no, don't give money. A picture posted to Facebook of Pothoff standing side by side with one of the panhandlers, each holding their signs, quickly went viral and led to a story on the local TV news. Amazingly, he says that his job offer is still open, and even more amazingly that this isn't the first time he's had a job offer turned down by a panhandler. YouTuber Jack Vale, who runs a channel with his family, was alerted by his uncle to a homeless man who didn't appear to be exactly what he claimed. The uncle thought he had seen a regular panhandler in his neighborhood driving away in a nice new car, so he enlisted Jack to do a little investigative reporting, and it turned out that he had hit the nail right on the head. After surreptitiously taking video of the man holding a sign and taking donations, Jack and his makeshift crew followed him down an alleyway, where sure enough he climbed into a nice new Chevy and took off. The intrepid YouTubers then managed to follow him to a house in a nice neighborhood, where they confronted him about his day's activities. Predictably, the man was not happy that he'd been discovered, and became belligerent, before almost becoming physical. But he had been utterly busted, and it's doubtful he'll be running his racket in Jack Vale's neighborhood again. Really? Portland, Oregon's Michelle Bocci won over the hearts of the town's residents with a sob story straight out of a patriotic country song. A Marine veteran who had served in Iraq and Afghanistan, Bocci had endured a litany of hardships, losing his wife in childbirth and even having his beloved dog, a bomb sniffer who had been by his side throughout his service, get struck by a car and killed. Social media campaigns called attention to his plight as a heroic widower with two young children about to lose his home, and the donations have poured in from churches and community groups throughout the area. But one day determined reporter from a local TV station started tugging its strings, and before long Bocci's whole story had totally unraveled. For starters, he had never served in the Marines or any other branch of the military. His entire service record, along with his stories of being a war hero and earning a Purple Heart, was totally fabricated. He had never been married, and the children he had been posting pictures with on social media were those of his friends and acquaintances, not his own. It's not even clear whether he'd actually ever had a dog. And to top it all off, several women have come forward alleging that Bocci coerced them into giving him thousands of dollars after meeting him on various dating sites. Bocci has been charged with several counts of theft by deception, but he's no longer in danger of losing his home. He'll have a dependable roof over his head for many years while serving his inevitable jail sentence. Man. People... Bro, people go to this length just to defraud people. Really desperate to defraud their fellow humans. Ah! I I salute. <laughs> God of it. So you faked being in the army or in the Marines. And after that, you, you also faked having kids. Telling people you have kids, but you were using the kids of your acquaintances, your friends. <laughs> this one off me. This one off me. This one off me. Kilo <laughs> day. This one, I, this one, I confirm criminal. Confirm. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys.
Former Army medic Garrett Goodwin lost his cool when he spotted a man on the streets of his hometown in full military garb, with a sign stating that he was a homeless army vet. Goodwin had no way to tell if the man was actually homeless, but he was pretty sure the guy was no veteran, and he wasn't about to let that fly. When confronted with the burly Goodwin, the decidedly more slight imposter dropped his story in no time flat, admitting that he didn't have a military ID card and responding to Goodwin's demands to take off my uniform with nothing more than a contrite yes sir. Goodwin's continuing to harangue the man after he complied with this demand earn him a few scornful remarks on social media, saying that he had gone too far and crossed the threshold into outright bullying. But it's easy to see why this kind of thing provokes the ire of those who have served, and it happens with disturbing frequency. Number YouTube one, channel Epic5 TV posted a video in which one of their contributors strikes up a conversation with a supposedly homeless down-on-his-luck guy in Las Vegas. He at first offers money, which the guy would have gladly accepted, but the YouTuber then claims to be out of cash, and instead offers to pay for a hotel room on his credit card, which the guy declines. It turns out that he did so for a pretty good reason. Unbeknownst to the con man, the same contributor had encountered him weeks earlier while filming a prank video in which he asks random bystanders to help him rob a bank to get their reactions. The guy admits that his his get-up is just a costume and that he owns a house, probably figuring that anyone with enough criminal tendencies to rob a bank wouldn't blow the whistle on him. This YouTuber's experience illustrates a valuable lesson, that anyone who is truly down on their luck would have no trouble accepting an offer of actual help, rather than cash. It might be a good idea to keep this in mind the next time you want to help out the less fortunate. Mm. Mm. Well, 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 you might want to keep that in mind the next time you're thinking of helping the less fortunate. You feel me? Because there are a whole lot of them out there that are fake. And like I said, they are, they are man, man, man. Can you just imagine you giving hard and money? You're going to work every single day working hard and then you're giving it to someone thinking this person is a real homeless person, not knowing that the person is living life. As soon as they're done, maybe they might have like a, you know, <laughs> you know how some people have 12 hour shifts, 10 hour shifts, 8 hour shifts. So they have maybe their own, their own shifts too. You might just say today, you know what, let me just go out there, 9, 9 a.m., you know, let me do a, let me do a 7 hour shift, sit on the road, go to a special location where rich people live, and it's just there like this. I'm homeless, can they come? And after like a six, seven, eight hour shift, the guy goes back to his Lexus or whatever expensive car he owns. And then he drives back to his expensive mansion. And then you over there working really hard. Not saying, see, I'm not saying you shouldn't help people. Don't get me wrong. But you have to be careful. There are a lot of fakes out there. That's just the truth. And like I said, my suggestion would be to go to the organization, their shelter, and hand the donation over to you know the uh the people that take care of them let me just put it that way okay guys i really want to tell you guys a story about some of these homeless people right that's why i say you can't really tell the real from the fake sometimes there's a friend of mine she really likes helping people of course you know it's always good to be kind right so there was this particular day where she saw this homeless guy it was at night i think it was around 9 or 10 p.m at night and she handed money but she wasn't the one driving she was sitting at the passenger side and her friend was driving so she handed money over to this homeless person and guess what happened? The homeless guy or the so-called homeless guy tried to pull her arm. You understand? Just imagine you handing over money to someone that needs, that you think needs the money, right? But you don't even know that the person has a bad intention. The person was literally trying to pull her out of the car. If not for the intervention of a friend that was driving, would you? It's because they were at the red light, the stop light. He just drove really fast when when it turned green and that's how she was able to escape if not he would have probably succeeded pulling out of the car so please guys if you're trying to help people out there not saying you shouldn't help be careful you know your safety comes first but anyways guys please stay safe out there and thanks for rocking with me that's gonna be the end of the video please be sure to like comment share subscribe all that good stuff and uh yeah i'll see you guys on the next one peace Thank you.